So today, my goal is to get this stuffed in there. Before we get into that, I got a butt ton of work done off camera. After replacing the upper control arm mount, got the driver's side suspension back together, got my new inner fenders welded in, and I also started to clean up on the firewall some. K member's been cleaned up and painted. Both my fenders have a nice coat of primer on them, as well as my hood. So before I get the stuff in this engine in, I got a few odds and ends that I need to take care of. Got our passenger side box O suspension goodies that needs to go in there. And I need to get my welds cleaned up on both sides so I can get some primer in the engine bay. So I'm gonna go ahead and start by getting the rest of this suspension put together. Now, in putting the suspension back in, I am running into an issue that I did not have on the driver's side. And that is uh, my ball joint socket stripped out. How are we gonna fix that? Say hello to my little friend. Go ahead and work this guy out of here. Clean up around the edge. Mess up my perfectly good control arm, but I need a solid ground. Put this bad boy back in. Can I get my fat skull in here? Yes, please. Maybe. And thank you. There we go. Now that I've got a couple of more tacks in there, we can get back to putting the rest of this together. Now, before I get to cranking too much of this down, I wanna go ahead and get our torsion bar in. I'm gonna take and start this. Oh, that was fingers. Get that started over the torsion bar cross member. And then I'm gonna wrestle the boot on, which is gonna take three hours, cause, you know, fun. Freaking thing sucks. <laughs> <laughs> Don't mind me trying to die. I have the virus that shall not be named, and it's kicking my butt. I'm sure some of you out there have a way better way to do this. But I just think pull. Pulling, pulling, come on. You can do it. There we go. If you have a better way to do this other than brute force, let me know down in the comments. That's it right there. There we go. Get her in there. Got her connected. Now I'm going to go into the backside, go ahead and drive it home. And the clip's in, so I can finish getting the front of this put together. Before we get much further, torquing this bottom one down needs to be 100 foot-pounds. There we go. We're gonna have to give it a smidge more so we can get the cutter pin in. <clears throat> oh, not quite. Oh. There we go. Where's that going? Nowhere. Where you going? Nowhere. Now for the top, let's see if we can actually get her in there. Yeah, probably not. So this top one needs to be tightened down to 55 foot pounds, but we gotta get it in there first. How are we gonna do that? Let's see. Loosen that up enough just to get her on. Oh, look at that. We can, we can. There we go. 50, there's 50, four, five. Um, that's a hard no. Can't get your fat ass in there. That's what's wrong. So I'm gonna have to do this just by feel. All right. Ta-da! Oh, we're a dummy. We are stupid. Oh, I maybe kind of forgot a thing. Let's see if we can get it in. Yeah, we can do it. There we go. All right. Shock's done. What is this extra piece you ask? That is the tab for the sway bar. Now, slap our brake drum on. Why? Why are you not cooperating with me? 
We are gonna fight. That's a little better. You're gonna go here. You're gonna go there. You're gonna go there. And you are gonna go here. Now, I just need to torque this bad boy to about 70 inch pounds. This thing's pretty awesome, by the way. I don't have one that'll do inch pounds. My big one only does foot pounds. So this was a nice little addition to the toolbox. Go ahead and get this bad boy on there. And cotter pin. Yes, I'm reusing the cotter pin. <laughs> That's why you don't reuse cotter pens. Shh. Don't tell Sean, he'll be pissed off. So, last bit for front suspension is and, uh, the tie rod. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and get this thing put together. Adjusting sleeve. This one end, there's the other end. You'll notice this is an ES319R and an ES319L. The R and the L denotes which way it's threaded, and these will only go in one way. And most of this, I just get in loosely till we get the engine in. Then I can set my ride height and then do a loose alignment to get it kind of in the ballpark of where it needs to be before we get it to the shop for a real alignment. Anywho, I'm gonna clean all this crap up and then move on to the next phase of this project. Well, might have gotten a little bit carried away off camera. Yeah. We went ahead and put the wheels back on, pulled out the old parking brake cables, got the ones on the rear installed, had to tear the brakes apart and put those in. And we'll put the front cable in once the engine bay is primed. That's what I'm working on right now, is grinding out all these spot welds and getting this whole thing cleaned up. I'm gonna go ahead and finish up these spot welds and. We'll see you when that's done. Got all the spot welds I can reach with this. Now, they blow all the crap out of here. With some compressed air. Get in here with the old scotch bright. Scuff things up a bit. That phosphoric acid did not do a very good job at converting the rust. This is all supposed to be black, but it's not. What do you think? Think we take this out? I think life will be much easier. We just take this out. Okay, getting this out is gonna be okay. Getting it back in, I think is what is gonna suck, but at least we can pull it out clean it up and that'll let us get back behind here. Cleaning, painting, yes, yes. Out we climb to get more tool. Wrench, clickety, half inch. Are you even in here? Why, uh, and this is why I can't ever find shit. I pulled out the half inch and the seven sixteenths and they don't know where the f they are now. I found it. It was in my freaking pocket. Boop. Yeah, that's freaking gone. <laughs> yeah. All right. Oh, it's not gone. It's right here. Sweet. So I can clean this up and get in here to clean up all this too. Oh, joy. All the scrubbing. And the blowing. And the cleaning. And the masking. This will be the first time in a long time that she's been back down on the floor.
just to make sure we don't go anywhere. Man, it has been a hot minute since you've been on the ground. I like it. I like it a lot. I just need to get that engine in there so we can get the front end looking right. <laughs> yeah, I'm excited. I'm gonna go ahead and mask the rest of this. All the suspension parts and stuff that I don't wanna get paint on them. And then uh, get this thing outside. and easy nice and easy there we go yeah I messed up my masking tape <laughs> Use some aluminum foil to tape off the majority of the things that I don't necessarily want paint on. The other things are masking tape with some back masking. I just need to get some masking up here so I can go up over the window and the hood and all that. So, And then I'll drop a chunk of plastic down along the side here and then uh, drop a sheet of plastic coming down from here and bring it up the middle over the K-member probably back mask here and connect so I don't get any of this. All right, I hope that'll do. I don't, uh, never messed off an engine bay before, so we'll see. Now the real question, spray bomb or spray gun? So I've made my decision. We're using the good stuff. So this mixes up four to one to one. Go ahead and take our mixing stick and do the mixing. I'm gonna take my little, uh, my little cheapo pour spout thing. Came from like the home paint section, but you know what? Works really well. Now watch me dump this thing all over the place. Uh, there's my four to one to one. There's my four. And next the reducer. And last but not least, our activator. Now this is standard or medium activator and reducer. I'll give this a nice stir. Snap our little lid in place and the retaining ring. And that is ready to spray. Now what I'm spraying with is an A610 LVLP spray gun. We'll see you in a little bit. one coat down. We'll let that flash and we'll uh, get the second coat on. Shouldn't need a whole lot more. Can't complain. It's looking all right. I am back in getting dirty coveralls and I suppose I should start working on this. I think for right now 
Gonna get this engine hoist put together. There we go. This is the part that sucks. Come on, there we go. All right. Ba bang Stop moving around. Now that that's done. We're gonna back you all the way up here. Gently. I'm always afraid this front piece is just gonna, you know, fall off. All right. Now, spin her around. See, I hear that crunch and I'm like, uh oh. I'll go ahead and bring that right there. Next, we get that halfway in the garage. We're just gonna cheat. Babe, when you have a few minutes. All right. Thank you. It's time to get this thing all taken apart. So I'm going to go ahead and put this on time lapse while I figure the rest of this getting her all apart out. Now, before I plug this thing into the car, there's a couple of things that I've got to fix from our run test. I'm gonna go ahead and get these gaskets scraped off the exhaust ports. We also got us a uh, leaky core plug. Uh, somebody didn't put sealing on them. Mm -hmm. I have a funny feeling this is gonna get messy. There she goes. Yeah, I knew that was gonna happen. This is just water and not coolant. Uh, oh, why? Why? My pretty engine's rusting already. Ew, that's nasty. Now a little Permatex Forma gasket. <laughs> yeah. I don't miss this stuff. Go ahead and goop this whole inner section here up. I'm also gonna goop around the edge we'll let this tack up for a minute or two and there sealed like it never even happened one side down one to go This side was much easier. Oh, my knees don't like me anymore. Last thing that needs to happen before I can get this off is this whole, this front bit needs to come off. Alrighty. Now, there's nothing left to do but get that in there. Yeah. Time lapse time. So close. So 
close. But I have a problem. So my engine mounts are lining up, but the trans mount is still about that far off. I had this problem with the 273 also when I first put it in. I think what I ended up doing last time is taking my motor mounts and just shifting them to the other side from this side to this side. And it lets the engine sit back a little bit. So I'm gonna do that. So after further investigation, I have found that if I take this one off the driver's side and put it on the passenger side, hey, hey. I drop it <laughs> and it also lines up where it needs to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this, this side off, swap them around and then we'll try again. <sighs> so after messing with those motor mounts for way longer than I should have, it's time to get this thing slid into place. I just I need you to go back a little bit more. <sighs> oh, bong. Ow. Frustration. It's the son of a bitch. Makes you do things like smack your head. Ah, oh, we rung our bell. So, yeah, I'm gonna keep trying to figure out why in the f this won't go in. Went in fine with this 273. This, no, I don't wanna work. F you. <sighs> Did you know that you can put the rubber motor mounts in upside down? See, this is Murphy's Law. If it can happen, it will happen. <laughs> All right, let's try this one more time. Push back, come down, back some more. Oh, now I gotta go straighten out the trans. Okay. Ah, oh, they're both in, finally. In, solid. You have no idea how happy I am that's done. But it's done. The 360 is in the car. We've got a few things coming up next. Now that the engine's in the car, we gotta get it running. Several of you have also asked for the designs and build on this, which is my run stand. And uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and tear it down and rebuild it on video. Get some pictures make up some directions, then you can build one too. Well, for right now, I gotta clean up. If you wanna see where this journey began, check out this playlist right here. Arrivederci. We're actually gonna have to go find the, um, the thing with the whatchamacallit and the doohickey. <coughs> Excuse me. This is weird. This tape smells like Chinese food. That's how I feel today.